Hi, on this episode of Small Town Western New York, I'm taking a day trip to a place that I really only recently discovered. Now, I've been here many times as a kid, just like any Western New Yorker, but I never made it into the village. This place has been really overshadowed for a long time by its much more popular and larger brother down the road, like Eden is to Hamburg. But I think that's what's really helped it maintain its authenticity. I'm headed to the village of Youngstown. Youngstown sits on the western border of the town of Porter and is just across the river from Canada and down the road from Lewiston and Niagara Falls, right where the Niagara River flows into Lake Ontario. The area was actually beginning to get settled way back in 1670 when the famous French explorer La Salle built a small fort here. And by 1727, the French built the castle, which was a centerpiece of old Fort Niagara. By 1809, the first store appeared here, and by 1812, there were a few log cabins which provided shelter for local tradesmen and shopkeepers. In 1813, the British and Indians captured Fort Niagara and burned most of the buildings in retaliation for the Americans taking Fort George right across the river. And by 1840, the town was re-established again with proper infrastructure, homes, stores, and farms. The Fort Niagara Light, John Carter Farmstead, St. John's Episcopal Church, and Old Fort Niagara, Colonial Niagara Historic District are all in the National Register of Historic Places. And speaking of historic places, I'm just about to make my way into the main draw here in Youngstown. And to those of us who know the area, this is of course Old Fort Niagara. This place is not only a true Western New York treasure, but also a National Historic Landmark, as well as a New York State Historic Site. It attracts over 100,000 visitors every year, and to most of us in Western New York, it really needs no introduction. The fort has a history that reaches back more than 300 years, with a pivotal strategic location at the mouth of the Niagara River, controlling access to the Great Lakes and parts west and it actually remained active well into the 20th century as a military post. I was able to meet up with Derek Schultz, a historic interpreter at Old Fort Niagara, for a tour and a talk about this living piece of international history. Derek was super knowledgeable and was really able to draw a lot of correlation to the fort's place and purpose in history, both then and now. This fort was meant to control access to the river from the lake, which of course leads out to the Atlantic Ocean. So if you want to get to the interior of the continent, you pass through here. You couldn't get more strategic in that era than this point. Not at all. Correct. I mean, for water, obviously, for waterborne well, vessels, or I mean, because it's the easiest way to transport anything, whether it was humans or goods, right? Especially goods, because you have to think as well. This fort was a logistics post. The whole reason this fort exists is not just to secure a trade route, but to also supply other forts that are securing the trade route. Okay. So some of the other buildings that you will have seen, like the provisions warehouse, the powder magazine, right. that doesn't just contain the supplies for here. That contains the supplies for every other ally. Fort along so it's a distribution point. Exactly. Right, that's it's, all it is, right? It's a warehouse essentially for distribution inland. It's the Amazon warehouse of the 18th century. <laughs> of its century. time, yes. right? <laughs> and that's really true though, because this is where everything was dropped off, distributed from here. So if you could control this, you could control pretty much everything inland. It was, right? as they called it, the key to the continent. A good diner is a cornerstone of any great small town, and the Youngstown Village Diner is no exception. I was able to catch up with the owners of the place on their only day off for the week for a quick sit-down chat about what they feel makes Youngstown so special. You guys have been here for a long time. Yeah. Two decades is nothing to sneeze at the restaurant business. No, it's not. Yeah. Especially in a small town that's a destination, not a sure. thoroughfare. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah. you guys are part of the community. So what do you feel makes Youngstown so special? Well, it's small, mm -hmm. it's quaint, and people mm -hmm. know everybody. You know, yeah. if you want to know what's going on, you come to the diner at 6 a.m. That's <laughs> when you ask your questions. That's why I wanted you guys on, yeah. Because it's so integral to the community. It's yeah. a gathering place, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. it's, a lot of times, the diner is where people meet to talk yeah. and just to talk about things in the town, just to right. catch up, just to be part of the community. My dad wanted me to call it a bistro because that's when bistros were cool. Oh, right. And I said, but diners are never gonna go away. No, they're not. <laughs> diners are kind of just inseparable mm -hmm. from American small town life. Yeah. You know, and I yep. love that you guys made a diner. Yep.
Although my last day in the village turned out to be a rainy one, I had a tip about a little history museum that was located up on the top floor in the village hall and ended up running right into the mayor, appropriately having a rather inspired talk with him about all things Youngstown and the special type of cathartic magic that villages can provide. You came here and visited. Yep. You enjoyed it. Oh, it was magic. It was magic. That was a mental mindset. Right. There was nothing physical. No. You felt good. That's you why, felt the that's emotion. That's why I used that term. Right. But it was right, mental. Right. right. So people wonder about mental health today. Right. Mental awareness. Right. Mental, mental, mental. Right. Villages provide mental stability to people. When you go from the city of Buffalo, from the Rant Race, or Rochester, or Syracuse, or New York City, or wherever, you want to get back into your safe space. Mm -hmm. You want to reset your mind. You yeah. want to refill your tank. If these places go away, where it's going to be a madhouse. Where are you going to go? Where are you going? Yeah. Where are you going? And that's why, so my byline to the show is to incentivize day trips to the great small towns of Western New York, right? Yeah. And that's right. the idea. These yes. day trips and these, or these weekend and refresh trips. Refresh yourself. Yes. That's all it's about. It's about taking yeah. that drink of life and health yes. that we need. And it's also hope. Yeah. Because these villages Absolutely. provide something that's so much more valuable than anything. And all of what you and I are saying right now, it's intangible. Yes. You know, you can't, you can't buy it. Yeah, you can't, you can't buy it, you can't touch it. You can't buy but it. when you feel it, you know it. That's right. And when you, when you come to Youngstown and you feel yeah. what it's like to be in a place yeah. like this. You're willing to live for it. Yeah. It's impactful. Mm -hmm. History notwithstanding, I have to tell you that this is one heck of a charming place that can easily steal your heart. If you want adventure and excitement, there's plenty of that here, and there's even more just a few minutes away. But what this village really excels at, where its heart is, is in the sheer peacefulness and sense of calm, renewal, and simple pleasures you get when you're here. If you're strolling along Main Street, taking in a sunset, hanging out by the water, or enjoying all that old Fort Niagara has to offer, it's just peaceful. Youngstown is the type of deeply unspoiled, well-loved small town that so many of us fantasize about packing it up and moving to. But most of us simply wonder where these types of places are. Well, there's one right here up at the northwestern corner of the state, and it is so, so worth the trip. The best aspect of Youngstown, to me, is that this is a town that's not obsessed with growth and economy as much as it is providing an authentic and real experience, full of charm and grace, and that intangible something that's so elusive nowadays. And this place has it all in spades. This episode of Small Town Western New York was made possible by the following supporters.